What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. We have Idalia that has moved off the coast of North Carolina. We have Franklin that's kind of just doing whatever it's doing over here. And we and it's still a hurricane for sure right here. It's become a lot more disorganized and a lot more disintegrated than it has was yesterday. And we also now have a few new areas of interest that we need to talk about. First of all, we have Tropical Storm Jose that is formed in the, in the Atlantic Ocean. However, it is expected to stay short-lived and expected to dissipate in the next 24 hours, so I'm not too worried about that. The remnants of Gertz are trying to or reorganize and redevelop after a long time, which is pretty interesting over here. 30% chance of, of development in the next 48 hours and 7 days, so I'll have to monitor that. This one right here, which is Invest 94L, now has an 80% chance of development right here. So we'll go ahead and go over this real quickly. An area of low pressure located just west of the Cabo Verde Islands continues to produce showers and thunderstorms with some signs of organization. The environmental conditions appear to be conducive for organization. And a tropical depression is likely to form in the next day or two while the system moves northwestward at 10 to 15 miles per hour across the eastern tropical Atlantic. So 8080 right here, but this is breaking news right here. We now have a new area of interest. I was kind of expecting this to be tagged in sooner rather than later, but it's for that tropical wave that is currently over Africa right now. We're going to go ahead and show you that right here. So this is what we have. It's this tropical wave right here that is expected to organize and develop in this main development region. And that's the one I'm paying attention to because that has the highest threat of potentially impacting the Caribbean, the greater Antilles, the lesser Antilles, and maybe in the long run, the United States, but we'll have to wait and see on that flank. So here's what we have going on. An area of low pressure could develop over the eastern tropical Atlantic early next week in association with a tropical wave. Environmental conditions could support some gradual development uh, over the system while it moves westward uh, or west-northwestward over the, these portions of the Atlantic. 20% chance of formation in the next seven days. So that's our big situation we have going on right here. So this area has been tagged as an area of interest, so we'll have to wait and see what happens as time continues to go on. But we do have some model runs that may have an idea of what may be going on. Here's the 0Z run as of right here. So here's the 0Z. This thing, uh, first of all, 94L is expected to organize and develop, but this tropical wave that's currently coming off the coast of Africa, this is it right here. It's expected to organize and develop pretty quickly after it gets off the coast of Africa, and it's supposed to be a wave for about two to three days before finally starting to develop a low pressure system and then starting to organize and develop, and it's off to the races after about six days out, according to the European. Once this thing becomes a tropical storm, just a little bit more organization, and then it really starts to really intensify at a very fast rate. Gets down to Category 1 strength by about 9 days out, and then it really rapidly intensifies. Gets down to a 974 millibar system, which is around Category 2 strength, as it stays north of the Lesser Antilles. However, there is still a lot of uncertainties when it comes to this. First of all, we don't know how strong the Bermuda High is going to be, so it'll depend on whether this will get pushed down to the Antilles or not. Second of all, we don't know what the steering current are like so we'll have to keep an eye on that and we'll go ahead and show you other models that are potentially looking at this gfs here's what we have going on this thing comes off the coast of africa starts to organize and develop right here gets down to a 987 990 millibar system however it stays mainly to the north it gets a it's a lot further to the north than what the europeans having gfs does have a northward uh excuse me northward bias to it but so something we have to monitor and wait and see on as time continues to go on. Next one we're showing you is the CMC right here. Here is the CMZ right here. The CMC has this thing organizing and developing, strengthens up to a Category 1 hurricane. However, the CMC has this kind of uh, staying out in the uh, out in the, in central, uh, the central Atlantic right here, the, having the steering currents collapse and then just move through much further east than both the Euro and GFS are calling for. It's, in, it's an interesting take for sure, but we'll have to take it with a grain of salt. As with all these runs, last one we're showing you is the Icon model as we pull that up. Here's the Icon. This thing starts to organize and develop and start strengthening at least down to tropical storm strength before uh, the 180-hour mark right here. Maybe a Category 1 hurricane if it gets its act together. However, the Icon is not 100% sure where it's going to go from this point, so we'll have to monitor the situation as more data continues to come in. So we're 
works. We're going to go ahead and talk about what's working for and against these systems. Easily working for it right here, global sea temperatures. A lot of areas of 29 to 30 plus degrees Celsius across the main development region. For those of you who don't know Celsius, that's basically 84 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit. That's fuel for these types of hurricanes. And the 30 degrees Celsius pretty much goes from the Gulf of Mexico through the Caribbean, starts getting into more isolated spots right here in, in the Eastern Caribbean. Then the main development region off the coast of South America, we see a lot of 30s all over the place. So more than enough fuel to really start this thing up. Ocean heat content, more than enough fuel to keep this going as time continues to go on. As starting out, when it crosses into the Atlantic, there's not going to be much OHC to start with, maybe around 25 to 50. But as it continues to move further to the west and it continues to interact with that, those warm sea temperatures, what also, also it starts to interact with is much higher ocean heat content, some areas over 150 OHC as we continue to move through. So that's our big situation we have going on pretty much from now until it gets to the Antilles, uh, potentially. Now we're going to go ahead and show you the wind shear we have. Wind shear across the Caribbean Sea and across the western main development region, absolutely great for hurricane formation and hurricane intensification and other tropical development as well. So if this thing does end up pushing south and start and enter the Caribbean, it's going to be moving through wonderful conditions for organization and development as we continue to pay attention. If we go ahead and show you the eastern Atlantic over here, there is some shear right now, but that is forecast to weaken over the next couple of days, and we'll go ahead and show you that. Now we're going to go ahead and show you the shear and the wind for uh, and the moisture forecast brought to you by the European model as well. Shout out to them for doing that. So here's what we got. We're going to go ahead and go out about 24 hours out. So 24 hours out, you start see a lot of the shear in the Gulf of Mexico, Caribbean Sea, Western MDR, very good for organization, very good for development. Now we're going to go ahead and go out about 48 hours out. There, the wind shear does start to weak, uh, does start to fluctuate a bit in the eastern main development region. Same here in the Caribbean and uh, uh, in, in the Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico as well. But then, starting about 72 hours out, the things start to really weaken. The wind shear starts weakening pretty considerably as this tropical wave comes off the coast of Africa, and then it starts to organize. Starting about a, a four days out or so, so we're going to go ahead and show you the moisture component to see what's going on. Very strong moisture pocket that this thing's coming out with. So if it can evade all that dry air that's currently in the uh, in there right now and kind of stay in its own moisture pocket, it should have no issues organizing or developing. So that's our big situation right here. Apologies, that's our she that's our shear anomalies right there. Here's the six. Uh, here's where we're at about six to seven days. Wind shear does appear to start increasing over here, but that's mainly due to inflow and outflow. Right there, I see this stuff a, a lot when it comes to very rapidly organizing tropical systems and tropical cyclones. So that's what we have there. So the real question is the moisture forecast, and it is expected to interact with a little bit of dry air at first, and that's what why it starts we, uh, fluctuating in intensity right there. But by the time it gets going, it should uh, be able to clear all that dry air out, and then it's off to the races with that. The last thing we're showing you is the European Ensemble runs as we continue to evolve them. European ensembles start to organize and develop. I'm counting about 35 to 40 ensembles having this thing develop, and about 20 to 30 of these having this at hurricane strength already. Now, the question is, where is this going to go? Some of the ensembles actually have this impacting the Antilles. Some of them hit, hit the Bahamas. Some even actually go as far to hit Florida in southern Florida right here, but it's too early to see. However, all, all others also have it keeping out to sea, which would be the best case scenario. So we'll have to continue to monitor that as time continues to go on we're closing the video out right here hope you enjoyed it be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new today is the two-year anniversary of pat's path predictor so if you guys please could please be sure to subscribe if we could get to 3600 subs by the end of the day that would mean the world to me and it would mean the world to the community around us but with that being said have a wonderful day guys stay safe